Wasn't it a nice wedding, Mother? Yes, dear, but aren't all weddings? Now, please sit down and relax. You've done too much already. I just hope the excitement wasn't too much for you. Honey. <laughs> oh, Lois, I'll just never get packed. And Carl's supposed to be back with a car in half an hour and... <sighs> Gee, you've just been so good to me. Here's to the fourth roommate you've married off. Moving into this apartment is like getting a passport to the altar. Oh, well, maybe it's my fault. I should have never let you move away from me. I only moved 20 blocks downtown. Besides, you know everything there is to know about me. Yes. Monday night, you typed thank you notes for Mike Turry. Tuesday, you had a late rehearsal. Oh, the way they overwork you at that place. Wednesday, you had a date with a George. A young writer Mike is interested in. I was just helping him find a place to live. The only thing Mike isn't interested in is right under his nose. Oh, mother. Oh. Hmm. Uh, forgive me. I guess you thought all the guests were gone. I was hungry, so I wrapped this hammer on the only piece of cheese I could find. Oh, let me make you a real sandwich. Oh, no, no, no. This is excellent. Uh, could I prepare one for you? Without the cheese, of course. I should go, huh? Oh, there's no rush. You don't know who I am. Actually, we met, but there were so many people at the wedding. My name is Joseph Dunn. Oh, you're a friend of the groom. Carl works in your export company, doesn't he? Yes. And I'm told you have a very glamorous job on television. Oh, well, I'm not in the glamour end of it. Oh, but you're very important on one of the big programs. Oh, I'm not important. Why not? Well, I don't know. Maybe I've just been too busy to become important. But my work is exciting. I work for a very talented young producer, Mike Terry. You must have heard of him. He's just a genius. I take this week's show, for instance. It's being directed by Pete Millett. What? Four years ago, Pete worked as an office boy for Mike. And now he's his staff director. Say, did you see our show two weeks ago? Uh, no, no, I'm very sorry. Mike was breaking in a new star. I knew she will be before very long. Well, how do you fit into all this? Me? Yes, you tell me about a... Director that Mike Terry started, about an actress that Mike Terry's gonna make a star? What do you do? I just help out. Uh, Miss Walters, could you have dinner with me? Well, you certainly have a way of surprising me with your questions. We could go now. You mean tonight? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. Well, why not? Well, uh, Madge hasn't finished her packing yet, and uh, Mother's gonna spend the night here. But I didn't ask Madge or Mother. I asked you. Oh, I'm sorry, I just can't. Uh, the show's on at 8.30, and of course I can't miss that. Mike always asks questions in the morning. Mm. Well, perhaps some other time. Goodbye, Miss Walters. You certainly have a full schedule. Fire Lois Walters. That's like asking me to cut off my right arm. Well, would you rather cut your budget for cast or story? Oh, but Smitty, we've been together for eight years. We started together. The trouble is she's become too high salaried for a production assistant. Uh, look, Smitty, could I hold off telling her for a couple of weeks? I I've got a chance to get Floyd Stafford for one of our shows. He he's in from Hollywood. He just finished a big feature and he can be very rough to deal with. But Lois used to go with him and maybe I could use her help. I'll break the news to her after his show. Any way you want it, Mike. But she's through. Keep it between us, Mitty. I wouldn't want to upset her just now. What do you think, Lois? I thought it was a wonderful dress rehearsal, Mike. Annie, get these costume changes down to Oliver right away, will you? Oh, here are a few on music shoes, too. Oh, don't forget to ask him about my raise. The sponsors love the show. Uh, no reservations from the viewing room? Oh, very minor. Oh, hey, finally. Uh, say, you've got a mistake on those screen credits. Emily Bear spells her name with an H. Don't question, Hank. She's the star. Just give her the H. Thank you. <laughs> say, Mike, Annie's due for a $10 raise, and we don't want to lose her. Pete, you're doing a lovely job. Say, Mike, maybe you better get down to the viewing room. They're in a wonderful mood. It's a good time to talk to them about the script for the last show of the season. You know, the one they didn't like. Right. What would I do without Lois? Wouldn't have a show. That's what he'd do without Lois. I'm just a secretary who's forgotten her shorthand. 
Why aren't you associate producer on the show? Well, Mike Terry doesn't need an associate. He's a loner, I guess. Besides, they don't want to pay that kind of salary to a girl. Mike did say he was going to put my name on the screen credits next year. Lois Walters, assistant to the producer. I could take a minute out and say it. Thanks. Oh, I, I know you got me this job by putting in the right word at the right time to the right guy. You were being wasted on those second-rate programs. Oh, Mike can't see the forest for the trees. He's a dope not to see what he could have. Control room, TV3. Oh, Mike's not here. I haven't said hello to me. You I'll take it. Sometimes. Just a minute, I certainly do. Listen, uh, Mike's giving a party tonight after the show, and he asked me to hook someone for him. Can you think of any reason why it shouldn't be you? I can't think of any, can you? Budgets for me, sweetie? Yeah. When I get to be a big producer, you'll never go begging for a job. <laughs> That's big of it. Great news, Lois. I've just firmed up a deal with Floyd Stafford. You mean the big movie director? Yeah, it's quite a coup, huh? We've got to find some top scripts for him. Lois, you used to have a crush on him, do you remember? What kind of stories does he like? Mr. Terry's office. Oh, it's been quite a while. I, I haven't seen Floyd in at least seven years. Yeah, that's right. It's seven years ago that he went to the coast. Mm -hmm. We started in television together. In your office, Mike, on that early morning show. He sure hit it big. He sure did. Uh, Lois, it's that Mr. Dunn again. I can't tell him you're in conference around every time he calls. Well, who is he, an actor? Oh, no, no. I'll take it. Excuse me, Mike. Hello, Mr. Dunn. Oh, it is you. I can't believe you finally answered. Now, I know how busy you are, and I can imagine all the things you have to do for Mike Terry. But my question is still the same. Will you have dinner with me? Well, I got a pretty full week this week. Um, Floyd Stafford's publicity shots. Oh, of course, you have a lot to do. Well, yes. Yes, I can have dinner with you tonight. Floyd Stafford. Mm -hmm. All I can remember about him is that he wanted to marry you. You've got a one-track mind, Mother. Oh, it's a good track. You, um, uh, you were in love with him, Lois. What happened? All would have been all wrong for his career. To have married anyone at that time would have held him back. And I was right. Look how well he's done. And I suppose your tongue is tied with Mike Perry because of his career? Hmm? Mike's never been married. And Floyd? Twice. All right. What about Mr. Dunn? Mother, I don't know a thing about Mr. Dunn. He just wants to talk. Talk? Oh, Lois. Arigato. I don't come here very often. It reminds me of my shady past. Oh. Lois, I have a confession to make to you about my problem. My problem is I have no problem. I lied to you. But in a sense, you forced me to lie. I realized that you wouldn't come out to dinner with me unless you felt there was something you could do for me. <laughs> it is true, though. You always are helping others. Writers, producers, directors, even your roommates. At the sacrifice of yourself. Well, I certainly didn't mean to give that impression. I just work for Mike and the show. What does Mike do for you? Well, you talk as if it's wrong to do something for people. No. No, it's admirable. If you don't make a profession of it. Now, please don't be annoyed. You're the first woman I've asked to come out with me in two years. No. Well, and what happened two years ago? My wife died. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a son eight years old. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, if you ever need a babysitter, just let me know. No, oh, I have a very good housekeeper. I'm interested in something a little more permanent for my son and for myself than a sitter. Oh, you're angry because I asked you out under false pretenses. No. I think it's kind of funny. Just wait till I tell Mike about it. I haven't told you about the show we're going to do a week after next. Now you just have to watch this one. It's being directed by Floyd Stafford. Who? Floyd Stafford, he's one of the finest directors in the country. It was really quite a feather and I can't even get him. The script Floyd is going to do is written by a boy Mike discovered. I'm sure your work is very interesting, but 
You're talking about it now only so we won't scratch the surface. Do I move too fast? I'm sure I do. I have to. I'm a young man, but I'm busy and I want to get married again. When I meet a woman I like, isn't it ridiculous to avoid the subject? We're mature. Either she likes me and there's something to work from, or there's nothing. It's, it's not very flattering to a girl. Why not? Well, you put it so squarely on the line. It, a girl expects a little more subtlety. A girl? What is this talk about a girl? You're not a girl, you're a woman. I don't think you were lying. You do have a problem, but I can't help you. You don't understand. Oh, yes, I think I do. You met me and decided to take me out to dinner. And out of gratitude, I'd come and replace your housekeeper. No, 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 just listen to me. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't need a man that badly. I have more around than I know what to do with. Lois, please. What you don't seem to understand is there are more important things in life than getting married. Like what? Would you mind taking me home? Oh, thanks, Nick. What do I sign? That won't be necessary, Floyd. Lois! Oh, Lois. oh dear. <laughs> oh, let me have a good look at you. Still working for Mike Terrence. Yes, I know. Come on, let's go inside. Mike told me. And I told him that I would direct the show for free just because you were on it. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, oh, Lois, we should have kept in touch. Letters and stuff. I guess I wasn't very good at it, though. Oh, you were busy building a career. Now, don't kid yourself. I spent the first couple of years out there hating myself for listening to you. Well, you talk us out of getting married. Oh, it took a long time to get you out of my system. Oh, but you have so much, Floyd. A wonderful career on the coast and... Beautiful wife and a baby. Oh, I'm happy now. Well, what about you, Lois? Oh, I told you what I'm doing. I know, but I mean besides work. Well, I'm not married. I know. But I got the impression... Well, let's be honest, I got the impression from Mike that you and he were pretty close. Oh, well, Lois, <laughs> if you're not married, I know it's because you don't want to be. Come on, let me get you a drink. You enjoyed the concert? Yes. Your thoughts were a thousand miles away. Or at least a few blocks. With Mr. Floyd Stafford. Oh, no. I'm not still in love with Floyd. Seven years is a long time. It's just that seeing him again... Oh, I don't know. You felt you had been left behind by time. Well, I can certainly plan on you being blunt, can't I, Joseph? <laughs> oh, but I'm so glad you say exactly what you mean. I just wish I could. I don't know why you put up with me. After that first evening, I was never going to call you again. But then I decided it was pride. And I liked you better than pride. You know you're wasting your time on me, don't you? Allow me to have that as my problem. Ah, uh, you see? I have a problem after all. Maybe you can help me. Will you slap me or tell me to take you home? Perhaps there's hope that the girl is beginning to grow up. Oh, Joseph, don't make me feel silly. I am grown up, too much so. Is a grown up person afraid of meeting a child? Every time I suggest it, you find excuses. Are you afraid of meeting my son? Well, yes. Yes, I am. You don't know how much. I'm afraid I'll like him. And my whole life might change. Was oh, that so terrible? I'm sorry, Joseph. Of course I want to meet him. 
Then come to dinner at my house. Tomorrow. Well, I can't tomorrow night. I have a staff meeting. Wednesday, I promised Annie that I... Lois? <laughs> All right, Thursday night. I'll come Thursday if you want me. You know I do. All right, Miss Efficiency, now remember this. Take the 610 from Grand Central. I'll pick you up at the station. It's only a 50-minute ride. You got that? Yes, sir. You look divine. I'm scared to death, Annie. What do you take an eight-year-old boy? Lois, it's from Leah Madden's agent. Leah Madden's sick. She can't do the show. What am I going to do? Mike went to the country for a long weekend. What's Floyd Stafford going to say when Leah Madden doesn't show up for rehearsal tomorrow? Annie, get me Floyd Stafford on the phone. No, wait a minute. There's no sense in upsetting Floyd right now. I've got to do something. It's Mike's best show of the whole year. Lois, you're missing a date with an eight-year-old. Well, I can't let Mike down, Annie. He wouldn't let me down. Come on, let's get to work. Uh, uh, who are some of the stars Floyd's worked with? I wasn't feeling well, so I thought I'd come on down and spend the night with you. Well, was it a nice dinner? No. No, I didn't go. I couldn't. The worst thing happened. Leah Madden got sick. Mike was in the country. Floyd had his heart set on Leah. We thought we'd go out of our minds. Poor Pete. He's, he's just never had to face such a crisis. Was it so important? Well, yes. It was to me. It was my job. It's awfully late. I better find out who it is. Oh, Joseph, it's so late. You drove all the way into town. I wanted to find out what kept you away. Oh, didn't Annie explain? I told her to. She explained, but I'm not sure it made sense to a boy of eight. I built up your visit. Why didn't you phone yourself? Joseph, please. Mother's here and she's not feeling very well. I am sorry, but there was just nothing I could do. Mike was in the country. Why didn't he come back? It was his crisis. I didn't call him until it was solved. You had to solve it personally. For him. He's done so much for me. Oh, Lois, you have so many trivialities in your life that I'm afraid you have no room left for anything that matters. I'm sorry, Joseph. I, I really wanted to come honestly. No. No, not honestly. Or you would have been there. You're capable of so much love, Lois, but you're afraid to let it out. You'd prefer to give anything. Your time, your energy, your advice. Anything but not your love. You lost Floyd Stafford because of this shut-in love. And Mike only uses it to his advantage. Oh, he has little need to worry. You will never burden him with it. Good night, Joseph. Goodbye, Lois. Joseph! Gone. Oh, I didn't want to lose him, Mother. I don't blame you for being upset with me. Oh, Mother! Lois, call Dr. Edwards quick, quick. I knew you were doing too many things. Is it your heart? Yes, call Dr. Edwards. Yes. I didn't bring my pills to me. Dr. Edwards, please. Sorry, but Dr. Edwards is out on a call. Can I have him call you when I hear from him? Oh, please, this is Lois Walters. My mother's here at my apartment. It's her heart. Please try and reach him. Mother, get the prescription out of my purse. Take it to a drugstore. There must be one open. Well, I, I won't leave you alone, Mother. Oh, I'll call me. Oh, no, he wouldn't be home yet. I, I'll get Pete. I have to ask a favor of you. Can you do something for me right away? Oh, I'd love to, doll, but well, I've got a party going on. I really can't leave. Call Annie. She should be home. 
around by now. Bye. <laughs> I'll call Annie. I know you can get the prescription for us. I can't seem to get any help at all, Mother. I'll have to go myself. But you'll be all right. I'll be back in just a minute. I couldn't leave and I couldn't think of an excuse to ring your doorbell again. Oh, Joseph. I need you so. I just saw Dr. Edwards. Has anything happened? No, no. Your mother's heart isn't what it once was, but he says she's going to be all right. Doctor said you should try to get some sleep now. Oh, I haven't even thanked you. Please. Come on. I'll take you home. Joseph, I, I don't want to go home. I couldn't sleep anyway. I know it's early and you're tired, but could you do one more thing for me? Please take me to your house. I want to meet your son this morning.